never coming back. I was there. Imbar came knocking on the door to my cubby on the ship. I locked it, curled up tighter in my little bed. An icy breeze floated in through my open window. The ocean lapped outside, fresh, clear. Unlike me. Imbar. Oh, sir, can I come in? I said nothing, hiding. I shouldn't have gotten so angry. I was horrible. A monster. I couldn't control myself. I was less than human, and they were all right about me. I was only worth something if someone else could control me. I'm hurt. Arlo, sir, please. I know you're hurting in there. Let me see you. I drew a pattern of opening with my hand and unlocked the door, head buried in my pillow. I'm very opened up with a cry, with a creak and took the three steps necessary to cross the little room. Arlisar, what happened? I held my hands up and signed at him, face still on the pillow. Einvar had learned a few of the hand signs I used to speak to Gil. He's an idiot. He doesn't understand anything. Arlisar, I don't know what you're saying. I felt him take... I felt him place my slate down by my head. That looking, I sloppily scrawled on it with a piece of chalk. What a naive fool. Oh, Arlisar, he's been asleep 400 years. What do you expect of him? My good hand smeared the runes out in the chalk dust and wrote over. Better. I'm far. Arlisar, this is an opportunity. It's a slim chance, but we have the opportunity to save the North from the after Katoria. Gil wouldn't have wanted you to pass up this opportunity. I snapped the chalk in half and threw it. I was shortly followed by the slate. He caught it. I recoiled into the corner, gasping. What was I doing? Why was I doing this? Oh, sir, give him a chance. I think he'll make a good leader with some advisement. He's not trying to replace Gil. No one could. I curled tighter. Arla, sir, hissing. I don't want Gil. I hate him. I'm bar. Arla, sir. I sprung up, whirled to face him. I didn't understand my own rage. Einvar took another step towards me. I pushed him, beat his chest with my fist. He stood firm, arms spread defenselessly. I screamed with my hiss of a voice. I hate him! I hate him! I hate him! I cried until my voice gave out and clawed at Einvar until my anger faded and there was sobbing. I threw myself into his arms. He held, squeezed, Safety. I could barely breathe. Only my right eye ever produced tears anymore. It burnt, and I was on fire all over again. There, there now. Shh. It's all right. I nodded, wordless, swallowed, coughed. It hurt to swallow. Everything hurt. I clung to him, but he wasn't Gil. This wasn't home but it was still safe. Here, I could collapse. Slowly, my breathing returned to normal. The chill of the ungodly hours of the morning and sea. The chill of the ungodly hours of the morning and sea began to settle in. But Imvar was warm. He hummed to me and lulled me nearly to sleep. I pulled away from him, still clutching his shirt. My throat hurt. I whispered, I want to help. I know you do. I don't know how. Yes, you do. You are Arlisar de Magnia. Even if Gil is gone, the House de Magnia name means a great deal. I shook my head. I was never formally adopted. I wasn't, any of, I wasn't in any of the family members' wills. I am part. Please, Arlisar. I swallowed. It would be hard. At least, the servants and extended ma family member never... I swallowed. It would be hard. I wasn't really a f member of the family. At least, 
The servants and extended family had never thought so, even if Master Einhard had disagreed. I would have a hard time laying claim to the family name, especially if I gave the power straight away to a mysterious man who might or might not be the once and future emperor. It would be a challenge to help Ryov establish himself in the nobility, even if Gil had been there. Gil would have known exactly who to hound and who to cajole. Gil. He was never coming back. I took my pendant in my hand and squeezed. At least I had Imvar. He was good with people. With him, it wouldn't matter the truth behind Ryov at all. The legend would live on its own. Reclaiming the legend would be our saving grace. The Chevaliers of Old Thule had a pledge that the officers of the Novothulian army recited to this day. It surprised me that our friend Rio hadn't said it upon thinking about it. Fitul Absoun. For Thule, the world. I remember when I wrote this chapter, one of my main goals was to focus on really getting that sense of panic in Arlisser's, um uncertainty with herself, her uh, the war she's constantly waging against herself um, that she describes as burning. I actually lioned this one before I read it, and I found so many occasions where I used. Uh, adverbs that weakened things, or I used ing verbs that weakened my lines. Uh, for example, and I think this rewrite with that focused on ed verbs and shorter sentences ended up making it a little snappier. Though, even after doing this brief line edit, I still am not entirely satisfied with the emotion here. I think, and admittedly, you know, this is meant to be read in, um, with other things, so it might have been better. Um, if you just read them back to back, but on its own, I don't, I still think that it's not quite, um, enough. I don't think you feel it because Arlisser is really overwhelmed here. She's, I mean, she's like beating up someone who is trying to help her. She's screaming at him. She's throwing things at him and he just is like taking it. Uh, Arlisser is being low-key toxic here. Um, but Arlisser also doesn't know what else to do because she's never really been in a place where she's allowed to express her emotions. And now they're so, like, she's not even really been allowed to feel them. Um, I haven't gotten to it, into it in this much in the backstory or like um, in the detailing of it, but I really won't, but obviously I think you can tell that she's really emotionally repressed at this point. So instead of like just feeling her emotions and crying like a normal person, she, you know, screams at people and throws things at them and freezes herself in the middle of winter on a boat uh, by leaving the winter window open. Um, and basically the only thing that pulls her out of herself, and this is an important part of her characterization to me, is her, um, is her work. She's, Einvar is like, listen, you still have a job to do, and it's to save this country. And she's like, okay, for Thule, the world. She recites that line, and she's back to focusing on doing things. But obviously, that's also not really a healthy way of handling things. Um, but nonetheless, I think that it's a really good characterization of her, and also of Einvar, who clearly knows how to handle her. Um, but also... Uh, doesn't clearly also isn't really willing to parent her or put up boundaries or you know whatever. So anyway, I just want to call that out. Um, but like, let's here we'll give it an example of one. So originally it was I nodded wordlessly, swallowing, coughing. It hurt to swallow, um, and that might be okay. But I changed it to I nodded, wordless, swallowed, coughed. I want mm, that's a little choppier. Although now that I'm reading it, I don't know if I'm, I like that, but, um, as another example, though, um, I also cut out a couple filter words, or, okay, or earlier on, for example, here's another better example of what I mean. I had it say, the ocean lapped gently outside, it was refreshing, um, which I changed to, the ocean lapped gent, or lapped outside, fresh, clear, unlike me. Um, because, firstly, if the ocean lapped, like, unless I'm, if lapped is already a gentle word, if the ocean raged gently outside, that would be a more exciting use of an adverb. Um, and then uh, I used fresh 
clear, unlike me, to contrast the ocean with Arla Serre, as well as, um, I think that Arla Serre is just, uh, or I just think that Arla Serre's voice is done in these, like, longer sentences that then punch, punch, longer sentences. Um, in comparison to, like, for example, um, Riev, uh, who I think, oh, he doesn't speak in, in that chapter. Uh, I don't think Riev has a chapter yet, but in contrast, Riev is like, um, here, I'm flipping to it. Uh, in contrast, Rio is live. Like, in the evening tide of the fifth day, Arlisar and I encountered the delegation of the army of the actor Cartorio that we had feared. Like, he speaks in these long, eloquent sentences. Um, I, back at the day, I really intended him to have this, uh, I'm, back when I first wrote this, I really intended for him to have this very, uh, eloquent, sort of borderline, uh, capital G gothic style, capital R romantic style of speaking. Um, now, obviously, I cannot compare to the sentence smith uh, Mary Shelley, but, um, you know, if, if I could just snap and have him speak like someone, he would speak like Frankenstein for Mary Shelley. Frankenstein, uh, sorry, excuse me, uh, Frankenstein would work, um, but I was going to say the monster. Either works, really. If you, if you really know Frankenstein, you know that Frank, if you kind of know Frankenstein, you know that the monster's name the monster didn't have a name, that Frankenstein uh, was the name of the guy who made the monster. But if you actually read Frankenstein, Frankenstein was the monster, and the monster was just doing his best. Ha ha ha. I wrote an essay on Frankenstein, I'm a big fan. Um, but yeah, uh, so I suppose there's me talking about line editing and how I want it to tie into my emotion and what I think about my character's emotions. Um, and uh, I hope you all uh, felt that, but if not, you know, there will be more angst coming. I love writing angst. Um, I feel like, uh, you know how some people really crave their fluffy stuff? All I want more than anything is for people to be sad and feel their sad emotions cathartically. That's like, that's my, my, dr my happiest place when I'm writing. I don't, I don't know why. Actually, I do know why, but we won't get into that today. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this letter. Um, and I'm uh, also, it was a little late this month, uh, so I apologize. Uh, also, also, if you haven't yet, you should join my Discord. Uh, link in the description. Um, and, you know, maybe eventually someday I'll put the fact that I have a Discord into a real video that people actually watch. But in the meantime, hello! my secret extra cool club that actually pays attention to things, uh, welcome to my Discord. Um, you're honestly, if you're listening to this, you're probably already there. But anyway, uh, yeah, I hope that you have a very good rest of your night.